Hello, my friends. Let me share with you my aquaponics greenhouse build. Two years ago, I started reading about this new aquaponics gardening system, and I thought that I would give it a try. So in May of 2014, I ordered a greenhouse kit. Before assembling this greenhouse kit, I thought that I should have a utility building where I can store the uh, fish tanks. I purchased enough lumber to build a 14 by 20 whole barn structure. After setting the post, I bolted headers and then assembled trusses and hoisted them on top of the headers. I then wrapped plastic around the building for a moisture barrier before putting hemlock siding on the exterior. At this place in the build, I need to supply the utilities. I put the gas in the water in one uh, ditch and the electric in a separate ditch. And then I had to dig a drain system for the interior sink. I had to drill a hole through my basement wall to access the water and the gas supply. The exterior access doors to the building had to be large enough that I could bring my fish tanks through. I made these doors six foot wide with half inch foam on the inside. All the wiring had to be run on the interior before I could get to putting the insulation up on the walls and the ceiling. This is the service entrance panel and the power transfer switch, which I'm planning on installing a power generator that will supplement the electricity, especially if there's a power outage. I'm using fiberglass insulation in the walls and the ceiling. Uh, for the overhead work, I got my son here to staple the vapor barrier, uh, something that I didn't want to have to do. I'm using stainless steel staples so that there's no rusting uh, from all the humidity that's going to be in here. I purchased a used natural gas furnace to be used to heat the greenhouse and the, the fish house. Here is the vent for the furnace. This is the sink and workstation. Uh, it's very invaluable. This is a must have in any of the greenhouses. I built bases for the fish tanks. Uh, the fish tanks are 250 gallon IBC containers. Uh, they hold uh, 250 gallons, which is about 2,000 pounds uh, when they're completely full. So the base has to be pretty substantial to make it very stable. You can see the drain pipes here. These are leading into the filter tanks. These are two smaller 40 gallon drums. One, the first one is a swirl filter and the second one is a fine particle removal. Since the framework to the greenhouse has to be bolted onto the fish house, I had to have the fish house far enough along that I could make that attachment. This is the access door to the attic storage. I use this as a long-term storage for items that uh, is only used seasonally. To get to this point in the build is approximately one month in time. Most of the time that was spent was on the interior of the uh, utility building, uh, doing the wiring, uh, insulation, uh, plumbing, uh, putting in the tanks and the drainage system. I decided to put an in-ground sump tank. Uh, this tank uh, is going to hold a large volume of water. I'm 
constructing a, a tank that will measure six foot wide, ten foot long, and four foot deep. Here you can see the side wall of the greenhouse. Notice that I have the uh, side capable of being rolled up. This is for ventilation. In addition to the ventilation, I'm putting a bug screen on that wall so that it'll allow me to ventilate but keep any of the bugs from coming into the greenhouse. I put plastic down as a weed barrier and then I'm going to cover all that with pea gravel. This is the southern end of the greenhouse. You can see the door and the windows that I can open for additional ventilation. We had a lot of rain and it filled the sump tank up. All this has to be pumped out so that I can put a liner inside the tank. It's time to put the covering on. This it has to be done early in the morning before any breeze even starts. Uh, if not, you have a giant sail and it'll blow it right up back off of the structure. I'll be heating through the winter. I put two layers of plastic on the ceiling of the greenhouse. This uh, is going to be inflated with air. The air will give me a three to four inch gap for insulation. I'm using half barrels for grow beds and I need to come up with a good uh, system for flooding and draining the beds. So I'm experimenting with different stand pipes and bell siphons. When I decided on a bell siphon that was working, it was time to start building the frames to set my grow bed barrels in. I'm setting the beds about 32 inches off of the ground to make it easy to work with. I started on one side of the greenhouse and as I built the frames I started filling them with gravel and continued working until I got around to both sides of the greenhouse. In all there's 20 half barrels on each side for a total of 40 barrels. Having these grow beds at an elevated height makes it very easy for me to drain into my sump tank. The construction of these elevated beds was very time consuming. It was a very slow process as I built the barrels or the grow beds I would fill them with gravel and uh, even started planting uh, the grow beds. Uh, it took a total of about um, a full month to get these grow beds uh, together and filled. These grow beds were constructed with four half barrels in a single unit and I did that just for the ease of construction and the length of the lumber that I was using. I had neighbors visiting regularly to check on my uh, progress. Um, these are some of the locals. A large sump tank helps keep the water level fairly consistent and pretty stable. Uh, here's the tank, um, the tank being flooded after some hard rains, pumped out and now uh, the tank has to be lined. Uh, after it's lined, uh, then it's being filled here, a little bit of relaxation time. I'm building a floating raft bed over top of my sump tank and it'll drain directly down into the sump when it's finished. Here's the uh, framework to the tank itself. I salvaged some 
wood out of my daughter's uh, childhood bedroom and this is a little memento for her. Here's the framework to the uh, raft bed and lining that I placed in it. This lining developed leaks. I had to remove it and then I relined it with a commercial type uh, pond liner. There's a lot of plumbing that's associated with the sump tank. There's inlets and outlets. Um, this is an inlet valve here and uh, here, there, here's another inlet. This one has a venturi that's aerating the water. You can see here how it's bubbling. The completed plumbing. I'm using two inch thick styrofoam as the rafts with two inch holes drilled in. Plumbing from the sump tank is running underground underneath the walkways. I placed air stones underneath the rafts in the water and it's doing amazing. The plants uh, do exceptionally well in this growing environment. This is the entrance from the utility building into the greenhouse. The third growing method in this system is going to be grow towers. This is the framework to suspend the towers. Here my sister is painting the structure as I get it completed. The vertical post is tied into the purlins of the greenhouse uh, structure. This is for uh, helping with heavy snow loads in the winter time. A drainage system is needed for the grow towers. A grid work is laid out with using four inch PVC pipe. Uh, these are then drilled with a three inch hole to facilitate the fitting of the three inch grow tower. This grid work will allow me to have 116 towers. As I continue to build, I keep planting. You can see plants in the grow bed on the left and you can see plants in the floating raft bed in the center. These are pole beans that have grown from the grow beds on the left side all the way to the center of the greenhouse. These grow beds have to be filled with gravel, which I have to bring in on a wheelbarrow. I spend a lot of time here, so I build a lounge area. This is the nighttime view. Some of the produce from inside the greenhouse. A green tomato, which I fried. Volunteer watermelon, happened to be yellow. Pull beans, did very well, especially in the winter. Mint can take over. I took it to the restaurant all the time. Pear cherry tomatoes, very sweet. More pole beans. And here, growing all the way to the center of the greenhouse. Strawberries in bloom. More berries. This is a mason beehive that I brought into the greenhouse. When the weather warmed up, the bees started hatching and flying around doing their pollinating. Some views of the finished greenhouse. The winters are very cold. This is unusual snow effect that we had where the wind was blowing these circular tubes. We usually average about knee-deep snow throughout the winter. 
Inside temperature of the greenhouse was maintained at 70 degrees. Here you can see snow on the roof of the greenhouse and inside it's sweating and raining. Thanks for watching my friends. Bye bye.